using all the balances that we've created in our general ledger, all the closing off that we've done, we take our closing balances and we plug them into our trial balance. So our trial balance as a format is relatively simple. Oops is relatively simple. We take all of our balances and we plug them in. Either we have a debit balance on the account or we have a credit balance on the account. And obviously we've used our general ledger to give us that. We've used our general ledger to calculate that. If you take your general ledger accounts one by one, the way that we prepared them, and if we go back to that, I'll show you our solution for our general ledger. We started off with the capital account. We had a credit balance of 118 rand, 118,400. And so our capital, we have a credit balance of 118,400. And we literally go one by one and go through them. The bank has a debit balance of 79,904. And there we have, we've put it in a debit balance of 79,904. Last one we'll look at here. Your equipment has a debit balance of 13,600. And there we go, 13,600 for equipment. So take some time and go and post all of these items and create a trial balance from the general ledger. These are some very easy marks. The difficult marks are in the general ledger themselves. Once you've got the general ledger balances, your, your trial balance is a lot easier. When you've done all of them, all your debits and credits, you'll notice here at the bottom, I've balanced the two, and you can see that they're exactly the same. They are in balance. And that obviously is where the name trial balance comes from. So we know that our entire general ledger, every single debit and credit that we've posted is in balance. For every debit, there's a credit. For every credit, there's a debit. We also know that this means that we've dealt with all our transactions accurately. We've pulled through all the numbers properly, etc., which is great. So these should balance. Your debits and your credits should balance. When we look at this, <clears throat> I've put these little items in green. What have I done that for and why is that there? What we've just done is we've posted all the general ledger items to the trial balance. So as far as our accounting process is concerned, we've created the general ledger from all the transactions and we've used the general ledger to create a trial balance where we've summarized everything. It certainly is a lot easier to look at information here than if we're trying to figure out information on the general ledger. Yes, this is definitely more detailed, but if I was a manager, if I was the owner of a company, I want to see the balance. Balances. What is our balance on equipment at the moment? What is our balance on the bank at the moment? I want to see items and I want to see stuff in summarized, not in so much detail. What we're going to do with this trial balance though, and one of the reasons we create a trial balance is to help us compile the financial statements. So we use the trial balance to create the financials. We, we have the format of the financials. We've spoken about the format of the statement of financial position, the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. And what we need to do next is take all of these items and actually compile a set of financial statements. We need to make this and we want to make this as easy for ourselves in an exam as possible. So you can imagine in an exam, if we go back to those original transactions for Tim's garden services I gave you, if I said to you, here are the transactions. I want to see the final statement or financial position. It's going to be a little daunting. So what we do is we put these in order. The easier it is for us to do this, the more marks we're going to have. So what I've done and what we do is we start off by saying every single account, identify what element of the financial statements we're dealing with. So here you can see we're dealing with owner's equity, capital is owner's equity, bank is an asset, equipment is an asset, advertising is an expense, vehicles are assets. So even though they're all over the show and they're in a complete jumble in your general ledger, you've given yourself some kind of order by identifying the elements. And on the right hand side, you can see what I've done is give the, the financial statements that it's going to be on. Your capital is going to be recorded and compiled into your statement of changes in equity. Your bank goes onto your statement of financial position. Your equipment goes onto your statement of financial position. Advertising goes onto profit or loss. So by laying that out in brackets behind every single account, I can very quickly identify which set of financials each item is going to go on. 
and that's going to make my life one hang of a lot easier when I take this and create my financial statements. So when I create my statement of changes in equity, all I need to do is say, okay, I need to make sure that that goes in there. Are there any other statements of changes? Yes, that one goes in there and I know exactly what belongs there. I'm not going to leave anything out. I'm not going to forget about anything. Everything is dealt with nicely. What we can do is we can go back a step and make sure that we set this up from our general ledger. So what you can see I've done here is I've added these brackets when I create the general ledger. Put your brackets afterwards. So when you are drawing up your general ledger, you can identify straight away what that account is. You can still do your general ledger exactly the same way, but it means that as you develop them, you know exactly what elements of the financials there are and what financial statements it's going to go on. It means that when you eventually draw up your trial balance, you could actually put all of them in order. You could make sure that all your items, your equity is up front, your assets, your liabilities, your income and your expense. And you'll see the PDF version of the trial balance that I've given you shows them all sitting in a pretty little order. It's not essential that, that, that you do that. Your trial balance does need to be in balance, but you want to make it as easy for yourself as possible to create financial statements from this information. And the more you can categorize these into their elements first and identify exactly where they would go, the easier this is going to be. So I suggest to you go back to your general ledger and go through each account and make sure that you can identify what that element is and where and which set of financial statements it's going to go on.